That's right. Philadelphia, Boston, New York. But now I know yourself, you're, you, you hail from Texas. I'm here from Dallas, Texas. I'm so the chairman of the USSRA, the second one that's been uh, uh, south of the Mason-Dixon line. So that's <laughs> a great honor for me, and it's great for the game of squash. So, so squash really is spreading all over the states. We have uh, many pockets, Seattle, Portland, Oregon, the West Coast, East Coast, no longer just considered to be an East Coast game. So Absolutely. Th this is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful sport. Um, if, you, if you look around, I believe Forbes magazine wrote an article mm -hmm. just recently about squash being the, the best uh, physical sport to play on a daily basis. I, in the, on the East Coast especially, uh, you can't play tennis uh, outside. Yeah. during the winter months and here you can come inside and play squash well, so there are a lot of pluses to playing squash a lot of pluses to playing squash and i'm i'm living tribute to that as you well know i think <laughs> i think it suits the american mentality to be competitive as well yes it does it's a very competitive sport it's very contentious uh, and and it's not for quiet people that's exactly right you got that right <laughs> uh, as you're going to hear from this new york crowd here uh, that's exactly right this is this is just so great well, Ken Stillman, Chairman of USSRA, thank you very much. Yeah, Martin, good to see you. Thank Cheers. you very much. Cheers. All right, enjoy the game. Yeah, thanks. It's an honor, honor for us to talk to Ken Stillman, Chairman of USSRA. Really, this, th this sport really is growing in the United States, which all of the squash pros from all over the world, they really figured that the growth of this sport, at least commercially, it really has to take place in the United States for, for our growth to be effective worldwide. Indeed it does. It's, uh, and as John Nimick has proved the last uh, so many years with the, the tournament suddenly on the East Coast and just the, the, the public knowledge of squash in North America now, it's, it's growing, growing by the numbers, which is great to see. And uh, as Ken Stillman said, the, the crowd loves it and it's one of the, uh, the top sports that every generation plays uh, squash from juniors up until uh, senior level, which is great to see. And it'd uh, be great to have more major tournaments over in the States or to see it grow in many years to come. Absolutely. Especially well, when you see the, nor the, uh, the New York crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Get behind the players, get behind their own players. And just the atmosphere that they bring to the players and to the tournament, it just, it just makes for a greater venue. And there's, there's plenty, more, uh, plenty more venues out there that the, uh, the American people will come and support. Well, all the players love coming to New York City. So we see Jonathan Power just, just creeping into the lead here, 2-1 in the second game. What do you think he's got to do here to, to establish a rhythm to beat Thierry Lankery, John? Uh, I, th I think he's, he's got he's to pick the pace up a little bit because Thierry's dominating the pace and he, he, he loves the Thierry at the, the all of last game. He, he slowed the pace down and he just controlled everything and power just couldn't get into his hard rhythm pace where he likes that three quarter pace power and then when he gets his own own length back and he gets it caught open for him then that's when his little trick shots come in and that's when he makes you do a lot of work another little let decision with the both players colliding on the tee looking for the tee position terry trying to get off and jonathan looking for a quick stroke <laughs> well there we see the mac and river squash not been variable this time but just given the referee this is all of a glare. Indeed. The glare, the flick of the head, and the wanting to say a lot more, but uh, I'm sure he's got to compose himself here. And he uh, very frustrated after the first game, after uh, virtually just getting completely outplayed in the first game, um, which is always not the best to start. But John has been there, done that before, and he knows what he has to do to get back and uh, control himself to get back on top of this match. Oh, that's a, a lovely great rally from, from John Power. Power. Typical rally by Jonathan Power, moving his opponent around, then the opening comes and he puts in a, a lovely drop shot, which Terry just had no, no way of getting it back and Power's got a 4-1 lead. So Power seems to be getting into his own rhythm now. Well, so a few little well unforced errors coming from, from Terry. An unforced error there, just a little bit of desperation there, trying to, trying to get a couple of points, get a bit of confidence in the second game, Terry Lanky. Now he's going to have to work his way into this game. Indeed. You know the way Jonathan's playing now, he, he's hitting more tight lengths, which has given him more opportunities because Terry's scraping the ball off the court and giving him a lot more opportunities to get up the front like he's doing now and control it. Well, that was an incredible front court exchange here from both players. Beautiful drop shots, tight to the wall. 
unbelievable this um, is good quality it's good athletes quality. there just get in and out of the two front corners very very quickly ready for the next ball and Jonathan getting in there again another lovely drop shot by Jonathan Power well we see Jonathan Power to win the last five points take him to 6-1 well he's, he's it's a good run he's obviously got that first game out of his mind and he's concentrated on his own match and it's, it's, it's proved very good for him as he's won the last uh, as you said five points it's obviously good for his confidence and makes it seven five point six points in a row well the crowds here are getting behind Jonathan in Power indeed obviously a very popular figure here in New York John he's won the, he's won the title three times before indeed I, I think I think the New Yorkers like the style of play they like the fact that he is not quiet on court He's not quite on court at all, which which the American crowd love with their with their sporting heroes and just the way he is, and he's he's quite funny with some of the things he says as well. Well, Terry Lanku creeping back a couple of points here, three seven. I think he's got to work hard to get back into this game. He's got to establish the rhythm that he had in the first game. Had a nice slow length. Create his openings. So we're very lucky to be joined here by Gregory Gauthier. Hi, who's Martin. Current How are you doing today? world number 10, is that right? Yeah, one no 11. 11. Yeah. Well, it's close now. We'll yeah. say, you're, say you're a top 10 player. Yeah, okay. Let's so say that. So, uh, Gregory, uh, you, re you are recognized as by, the, by the, a lot of the sports players in the PSA as being one of the, the up and coming players on the tour. Probably one of the two or three players to, to challenge for the number one position in, uh, in the next couple of years. Yeah, there's a couple of uh, juniors playing, uh, player uh, becoming uh, good, like uh, me. <laughs> and I like uh, James Wilsworth, Karim Darwish, and uh, so. Uh, this is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. And your, your English is getting better traveling around on tour as well. Say again? Your English is getting better. Yeah, of course. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So your, your countryman, Terry Lanku here, he's, he, he was very confident in the first game. He, he, took, he took the first game against John for power 15-8. Yeah. He's playing good squash, I thought. Yeah, he played a uh, pretty uh, steady game. Uh, he tried to keep the ball as tight as possible. Yeah. And Jonathan uh, was uh, getting uh, frustrated yeah. with that. And uh, but I think Power is leading in the second game. He's, he had uh, they played a couple of uh, strong rallies, and uh, that's a lovely shot uh, from Power. <laughs> beautiful shot, beautiful yeah. shot. That's one of yours, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I try. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Jonathan getting a lead here. Are, are you helping Terry out in between games? Yeah, I'm coaching. I tried to help him out. So we'll see if it works, huh? But, uh, so nice oh, oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fade flick, from yeah? beautiful from flick. Power, yeah. So we see that when you when you play, you seem to have quite a typical Gallic temperament, typical French temperament. But Thierry, he seems to remain very, very calm. Can you explain that? Very calm. Yeah. I think no. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, he's very calm. I think the the from his uh, from his Chinese mother, perhaps. Yeah, probably. <laughs> not typical French temperament. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> not. Not like me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so your match against uh, David Palmer last night, you're, you're happy with it? David Palmer? No, uh, sorry, uh, your match against uh, John, White. John White. Yeah, I played a pretty good game. Uh, we played well uh, and uh, we had uh, some good rallies and uh, some good shots and uh, I enjoyed it. And, uh, and uh, it was fun uh, to play him again, it was my second time and uh, he's a good player. And, uh, so I, I learned a lot. Uh, maybe just a little bit of experience. Yeah, maybe. And, uh, I had to deal with the ref as well. So <laughs> <laughs> well, very good, good to you. Bad luck anyway, in this event. Anyway, and good, no, good luck. It was good. It was good. Anyway. Well, good luck in the forthcoming events. I'm sure you'll be very near the number one position very, very soon. Thanks. Thanks, Ryan. Okay. Let's get back to the action here. A better rally here from Terry Lanku. Oh, and then a silly mistake into the tin. Sods Law, as soon as he said he was playing well, he uh, hit a very, very, he just, he just, oh, a great lead here. Well, that was a John big mountain for Terry Lanku to climb. 12-6 yeah. down, he went for the winner. Yeah. 
didn't quite make it. 13-6 down now. And what a big turnaround. Jonathan's come back on and played his game. He's controlled this whole second game, which he has done, and it's now 13-6, and he's got an unbelievable lead to take out the, the second game uh, with uh, with a bit of, bit of ease here, uh, Martin. Oh, another very unforced error by uh, Thierry Linky to give Jonathan Power game ball. Well, I think Thierry just capitulating a little bit in this game. Not using the tactics that he, he was using in the first game, John. Going for a, a couple of quick winners. Yeah, I think he was trying to go for a few quick winners and put the pressure back on Power, and he's, he's hit some unforced errors, and it's actually uh, put Power in the winning position and given him his confidence back, and he, he Power's starting to play his uh, natural game now, and it's paid off very well for him. So uh, Jonathan Power's speed to the front of the court has been phenomenal in this game. Yeah. Great squash from Jonathan Power. Indeed Using it was. His talent to win the game 15-6. Well, welcome back to this third game, this crucial third game. Game's lying at 1 all. Terry Lanku taking the first game 15 8. Jonathan Power taking the second 15 6. So both players really establishing their style of play on each of those games to, wi to win them. So this is really a, both players learning about, they've learned about the court, they've learned about each other. This will be a very interesting game, John. Indeed, they'd have. You know, Terry came out flat firing the first and one of, as you said, 15 15 8. And he just played his game and frustrated Power. Unforced errors was hit by Power. And then for the second game, Power come out, got into his rhythm, and Cherry was one who was hitting under four oh series, and, and Power took the game 15-6, so it's uh Well, it's been quite a long game so far, 38 minutes for the first two games. So not as long, not a marathon match, John, but still, it's been quite, a, quite an intense match, really. Indeed it has. And there you see the Cherry coming from the tee and Jonathan coming back in from the tee, so it's uh, another collision. And which both players are going to try and get a, a good lead in the third game to establish it after the first two games going one way for each other quite convincingly. As you said, to, to start off, this is a very important game to, to get a 2-1 lead and then knowing that you've only got one more game to go before uh, the match is finished. Well, Jonathan Power wearing, wearing a green top with red shoes. Is it, he's never been known for his colour coordination, well, he's John, never been known for his, uh, He's got great coordination on court with his movement, but for his dress code, I, I uh, ceases to amaze me that he can, <laughs> he can wear some of this. But that's Jonathan Power. That's, just, that's, his, uh, that's his character, which is, which is a great character. So that's, and uh, that's his product. That's his new... Uh, um, it's his oh, new it's line of clothing. It's hit that... Uh, he's hit a lovely backhand drive, but it's hit the... Uh, there's two panels. One... Uh, well, Jonathan Power getting off that great start as he did as he did in the second game, S establishing a three-love lead. He seems to be hitting the ball with more penetration, really trying to increase, put a lot of pressure, increase the pace of this game. He actually has. He's, uh, he's picked up the pace and it's it's worked for him. Terry can't get in there and love. control it. Terry can't let this get any further away from him. He can't. This do. third game is crucial. Indeed, it is. Power gets one or two more quick points and gets to a six-love, seven-love start. Great lead that Power obviously wanted, not what Terry would have wanted. Ah, oh, oh, beautiful boast. Oh, Jonathan just threw up his racket. Any shot could have come out of that swing, and the boast produced the winner. Terry looked like he expected a, uh, a just a basic forehand drive, and then at the last minute, Jonathan just flicked the little boats in there, and Terry was flat-footed, and that was it. Great winner by Jonathan. Well, this is old-school squash from Jonathan Power. He is playing like he's playing as he did a couple of years back. This is absolutely beautiful. He's just not he's not giving Terry a chance to to get back into this he's game. He's just completely closed him down, and Jonathan's playing his game, and that's the way he loves it. It's just the flair of Jonathan. It's as you said, it's old old-school Jonathan, and. 
That's when he plays his best squash and you're in a lot of trouble when he does. A couple of quick points and it's gone a seven love to power, which is an unbelievable lead going into the third game. Well, I, I was thinking, John, that you'll actually be very pleased about uh, about, about this because uh, I think if there's a possibility that if Terry Lanku loses this match, then you could go to number one in the next ranking list. Well, it's uh, not like I've already got other pressures on me, Martin, but uh, <laughs> that's, that's really, really nice to know. But uh, I think <laughs> that is the case, but, uh, you know, to not wishing the number one seed to, to bow out in a tournament, but... It'll be, uh, you know, if everything goes well and I've got to play James Wilshop yet tomorrow night, so I'm not looking too far ahead. But if, if he does bow out and I go one one round in front, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's another one of those great opportunities I have to, uh, to get my ultimate dream to, to the number one spot. But, Absolutely. Uh, thanks for putting that extra pressure on me, mate. It's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Just thought I'd add that in there for yeah, you. Yeah, it's great. Not like I've got two young kids and a wife and two <laughs> on the way to put that extra <laughs> pressure on me, but uh, that number one spot's great. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable flick. Beautiful like. shot from Terry Lankin. Well, well, Terry just creeping back here, a couple of points. Back to 3-7. Still a bit of a mountain to climb, but if anyone can do it, Terry Lankin, the new world number one, I'm sure he can. Well, we're very lucky to be joined by James Wilstrup here. <laughs> James at 20 years old, the ex-world junior champion. And uh, you had a fantastic victory last night against the ex-world champion David Palmer. You must be pleased about that. Yeah, it was a um, fantastic result for me. And, uh, you know, I've been pretty confident and uh, I've, had a, I've had a few good results. And um, that, was, that was another one to, to add, add to it, really. And um, I was just, just really confident and played really well. So. So if someone had written a script for you about two or three months ago about your results on tour, you'd gladly have, set, have accepted it. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's the last month or so has been uh, been a really good month for me, and uh, I'd have uh, had to take that any day. Yeah. No worries. So it, it was a very long match. It came from two love down. It's, uh, have you any physical effect from that? Or um, I know I don't have your opponent sitting beside me yeah, here. Yeah, right? no, I better keep quiet about that. I'm, I'm feeling absolutely fine, to be honest. You know, fresh as a daisy, and I could have played today. Yeah, right, really. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of psych, I know. I think, I think we'll get a word from Don White on this. Yeah, you looked like you were struggling a little bit there, James, last night, but you, uh, you snuck yeah. the game out in the fire, which was an unbelievable effort. I was actually pleased with uh, you know, I thought, proud I thought I was going to be mate. struggling, but I mean, I'm, I'm walking fine today. I've been flying around the court in practice this afternoon. Yeah, I saw you, you today. You didn't really move that well, did you? No, well, you know, I'm just, just giving you a few things to think about. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like what? Well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, mate, you know, the slander happens. We'll see. I'm saying no more. But back to here, what do, what do, what do you think the uh, what, what do you think Thierry's going to do after losing the second very easily and, and also giving Jonathan a good lead of 7-3 in the third game? Well, I mean, to be honest, I can't really see much, much of a comeback for here from Thierry. He's been injured for a few weeks. Uh, he wasn't in the French Nationals last week. Uh, lost in uh, Q8, so I think Jonathan's got the match now. Yes, well, it's, it's got back to 5-7. He was 7-love up, and Thierry's obviously won the last five rallies to go 5-7. So, but as you said, it's uh, he, he has come off a bit of an injury, and there's an unforced error. Bad but error. It's, uh, it's a long road, considering when you know the ability of Jonathan Power and his skill, and just to make he makes you do so much extra work, mm. and it's just... Uh, yeah, yeah he'll, be, he'll be putting Thierry through it, no doubt about it. James Walshop, thanks for those wise and wonderful words from you. Uh, well, wish you well tomorrow evening. I'll see you tomorrow, John. I'll see you at the office tomorrow. Look forward to it. Well, that was very interesting banter from uh, two players, probably vying for the number one spot over the next couple of years, James Walshop and John White. Indeed, and it's a, it's, it's a great pleasure to see James at a young age. Um, I've known him for a few years, and it's also good to see him come so quickly up the ranks, which uh, uh, no young junior has, has done that for quite some time, and he's, it's his only first year 
on the men's professional circle, I believe, and he's he's uh, he's had to start from scratch, and he's got himself up to uh, world number. I think he's world number twelve. World number moment, twelve, which is. I can see that increasing, uh, increasing pretty rapidly as well. Well, you, you s you've seen the last couple of times when you saw him perform last night, taking out ex world champion, ex world number one, Dave Palmer. He's a strong boy and he's got a great match, and he's just he, he's just took him out in five. So it was it was great to see, and the crowd absolutely loved it. Yeah. Well, that was quite an interesting uh, decision again, John. I think uh, this referee really penalising the, the player for standing on the ball, especially when going for a drop shot in the front of the court. Indeed they have. It's like uh, the last couple Jonathan's got. As soon as Terry's played a drop shot, Jonathan's gone in behind him in and asked and And the beginning of the first game, it was uh, Jonathan was getting penalised, and now it's, it's the tables are turned, and it's now Terry getting penalised, and he's getting a little bit frustrated, as you can see. Well, I don't think Thierry can really hit his way out of trouble here. He doesn't. He doesn't quite have the racket skills of of uh, Jonathan Power, and also, also the style of play tends to favour playing this kind of medium pace up and down the wall, frustrating Jonathan Power, yeah. not allow him, not allowing his creativity to express itself. Yeah. That's when he gets frustrated. That's when he goes for crazy winners. Indeed. So Thierry's he's got to find a way to break it up. But as you said, his racket skills are not up there with Jonathan Powers and. The way Jonathan's playing now, he's in his motion, he's very confident, you can see him, and he's, he's a great leader, 12-5 now, going into the end of the third game. Well, 12-5 is a big deficit to come back from. And we see Thierry Lanky just being a li little bit more, in, a little bit impatient here. Yeah, he's, he's actually getting frustrated with uh, the movement of Jonathan Power and just, just the amount of collisions they're having for let calls, but... That's been from the very start of the, the, the very first match, uh, the very first rally of the match. They had a, had a let call because of the collisions, and now it seems to have been getting to him. And he's, he's not moving as quickly as he was in the first game. And as you see there, he's making a lot of unforced errors now. Well, both these guys love to take as much space as they possibly can. Well. Well, that's a better rally from Terry Lanku. A nice straight length. Used the opening to, to, to flick Jonathan cross court. Indeed, he did. And it's, uh, but it's, uh, it's at the end of the game, and Jonathan's got a good lead of 13 6. So. Well, do you think Terry Lanku will be thinking about the fourth game now? Well, he's, he's going to have to start off a lot stronger than he did here. And if he gives Jonathan a little bit of a, a lead, Jonathan will just take full full credit of it and he'll just uh, he'll, he'll just take him apart like he has done in the last couple of games he got a, a, a great lead in the second took it 15-6 and he's got a great lead in this in the third and he's and he's kept it to the very end he's 13-6 uh, up well we see there that the, the match was has been going on for 49 minutes not a marathon match by any stretch and I think that's what Thierry has to do he has to get and get Jonathan into a long match he has to really show him that he's going to be prepared to stay on court for however long it takes. Yeah, in indeed it is. It's uh, The way Terry played the first game was just, uh, as, you, as you were saying before, Martin, he, he slowed the pace down and he hit, you know, he, he, he had the, uh, he made the rallies go a little bit longer, where now he's... Well, Jonathan uh, Power's movement to the front of the court in that rally was incredible. Unbelievable. Just picked everything up and just made Terry do the unforced error, and he did. And he's, he's just going lower and lower and lower until yeah. he eventually hit the 10. Oh. Well, here we go, so Jonathan Power, 14-6 game ball to take a 2-1 lead. And that's going to be hard to come back from. Indeed, it will be. And there is a stroke to Jonathan Power. Fantastic squash. Takes the third game, 15-6. Welcome back to this fascinating match here. Game of cat and mouse here. I'm joined by uh, joined by Mike Way, Jonathan Powers' coach of, of quite long standing, really. Probably yeah, which is a bloody years. miracle in and of <laughs> itself, isn't it, Martin? 
<laughs> sorry about that. Sorry about well that language there. You really have the patience of a saint, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. So Jonathan, uh, he really yeah. had a hard time in that first game dealing with Thierry's style of play. He's playing a very slow pace. Jonathan not quite hitting the rhythm that he wanted well to get into. Well, he didn't hit, he and he didn't find any length, did he, on that backhand side? He had yeah. to. Uh, Thierry was uh, Thierry was picking that ball off on that left uh, on that left service box so easy, and he was reading he was reading him like a book. So. I think uh, the answer was, and I think it still is, is to get that ball past him on the backhand, with a b hitting it a bit at a bit lower. Hello, what's this? I think they've got a new. S the referees, the referees have got a new system. They're rolling a dice now. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I it's. it's uh, I think they're actually producing more accuracy than they did before. Yeah, but it's not a normal dice. Okay, it's not is a normal it? dice. It's got eight sides. One dice has eight really? sides. The other side has eleven. <laughs> <laughs> but um. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so, so we just uh, I, th I think when he could uh, when he got the ball past him on the backhand side yeah. low and hard, then then it changed in the second game, and I t w it's hard to put a l just a little hold on those drives yeah. when the guy's so fast on the ball. But I think when he just sort of split it up a bit, then he can relax and let his hands work. The other thing we did talk about yeah. today was uh, was to let the I said the refs were refereeing a little different this week. And to be aware of it and not let yeah. him get not look at his head. Absolutely. But of course he didn't take that advice at all, Martin, did he? 